Hello and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll go over the features of Foxalab's only FDM printer, the Aquila. Now, the Foxalab brand is relatively new, but they're actually a sub-brand of FlashForge, a much better known name in 3D printing with their signature and closed box Core XY style printers. It looks like Foxalab is their effort to reach a bit down market to compete against the common entry level moving bed printers. And of course, if you're looking at the Aquila, you can't help but compare it with the Ender 3 series. I happen to have an Ender 3 right here beside the Aquila, so I think I've got a good first hand grasp of how these printers compare. First things first, and that is price. At $259 on Amazon.ca at this time, Foxalab easily undercuts the Ender 3 V2 which it most closely competes with and even undercuts the original Ender 3 at current market prices. This is an amazingly competitive pricing, considering it incorporates many of the Ender 3 V2's upgrades, such as a silent board, easy adjusting belt tensioners, a glass bed, and a color display. What you won't get, and to definitely no surprise at this price point, are auto leveling and a filament out sensor. Before I go into how well it works, a few words on the experience of putting it together. Granted, it's not my first or second or third printer for that matter, so obviously a beginner will and should take more time. But working quite casually, I took maybe an hour to put it together. The level of work is pretty comparable to an Ender 3 in that you have to assemble the x-axis gantry. The larger printers tend to have the gantry pre-assembled, which drastically reduces setup time. But it's really something you only need to do once, and you can also check that everything slides properly while you're at it. You should definitely check all the eccentric nuts, which are under the bed as along the x-axis here, and along the Z going up the sides. In my case, some of them were way off from the factory, especially on the Y and were very loose and had to be adjusted. The knot belt tensioners here make belt installation a breeze. I also found manual leveling pretty easy with these big knobs and the glass and bed both pleasantly flat. Turning it on, one thing did struck me and that is the noise. Not stepper noise because the silent board is as advertised, but this thing had the noisiest hot end fan I've ever owned. And in fact, I have gone ahead and replaced it with a Noctua to silent things down. To be fair, every entry level 3D printer has pretty low end fans. So if you want silent cooling, be prepared to spend a few bucks for better fans, regardless of which brand you go with. I guess this is also a sign of progress when the steppers are all quiet and we become so aware of fan noise. Okay, so it's a compelling sell on paper and it's reasonably easy to put together. But how does it work in real life? First of all, I'm a big fan of direct extruders. And in fact, after modifying my Ender 3 to direct, I haven't gone another molten printer until this one. I'm still not a fan of Bowdens, but I have to admit that at least for PLA, I can't complain about the print quality from this setup. Without any kind of E-steps tuning or other calibration, I first printed this 40 by 20 test cube. This is with my standard Kira settings for my Ender 3, except increased retraction due to the bone. There is a bit of variation right at the layers where the X and Y letters occur, but otherwise it comes out very well with all dimensions within 1% off spec. I then printed off the test part included on the SD card. And they will really have the settings tuned well for this one because it came off very close to perfect. There's just a tiny bit of stringing here. But really I'm impressed considering I'm using literally the cheapest PLA I could get my hands on. So even that might have gone better with a better filament. So conclusions are simple. If Ender 3s are known as the value for money option in entry level 3D printing, the Aquila is ridiculously good value for money. It is nothing to be ashamed of compared to the Ender 3 V2 except for popularity. However, many of the parts are pretty standard anyway, so I don't expect parts to be a problem. For example, the whole hot end assembly is compatible with the Creality design. So if you're considering a 3D printer in this size class, the Aquila is definitely worth a look.